What's the truth about the Yellowstone supervolcano doomsday theory? Well, we know that it's one of the few supervolcanoes of the world. There's about four in the United States. Two of them are very close to each other. That's the Yellowstone and the Long Valley Caldera of California. They're both on the Pacific Ring of Fire. If you spend time on the internet, it seems every few months humanity is faced with a looming existential threat from the depths of space. We just had an asteroid collision in the asteroid belt a few days ago on January 9th. Uh, okay, we have asteroid impacts on Earth as well. We have meteorites flying over us, just three yesterday, and now we're heading into a total lunar eclipse and a planet alignment. But let's go on to see what's happening here. Planet X Nibiru, the rapture, wayward comet, etc. According to conspiracy theorists, destined to destroy us. But there's one particular conspiracy treasured by theorists that our impending doom will come from within the planet Earth that lurked beneath America's Yellowstone National Park. It's a supervolcano that will annihilate us. Yellowstone in the Midwest United States is, they claim, about to erupt and send unfathomable amounts of matter into the sky, covering anyone in the vicinity in a pyroclastic flow of ash and rock, blocking out the sun, wiping out almost all life on Earth in the process. Conspiracy theories tend to draw on some grain of truth. The supervolcano really has erupted before, three times in fact, over the last two billion years or so, but the theory goes that it's bound to do so again soon. Michael Pollan, scientist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory to find out the full extent of this lurking supervolcano threat states. He specializes in volcanic geophysics, particularly how volcanoes change and behave over time using GPS satellites and other methods he studies how the surface of Yellowstone National Park moves to figure out what's happening below. Firstly, what is a supervolcano? Supervolcanoes or super eruptions are these eruptions that are on the uh, are uh, on the eruption intensity scale, and there's something called the volcano explosivity index (VEI). And eruptions that have a VEI of eight are considered super eruptions, and that's pretty massive. Most eruptions we see would have a VEI of three or four. Big ones are five, and then once a century or so, there's six or so. VEI eight is really, really tremendous. And what would it take to cause one? You have to have a really amazing amount of magma in the subsurface, so that's one of the criteria in order to be able to pull out all of that stuff into the surface and into the atmosphere you have to have it below the surface to begin with. And I think it's something that is interesting about Yellowstone. We don't know whether there's enough magma beneath the surface to have a super eruption. The evidence suggests that a lot of magma reservoir is actually solid, and about 15% of it is molten, so there's not maybe not be enough down there to have a super eruption. With that in mind, what are the odds of Yellowstone blowing its top? I think the odds of the super eruption in our lifetime, in our children's lifetime, in our grandchildren's lifetime are astronomically small. I couldn't even quantify it. It's not something I'm worried about. I find it strange that Yellowstone is a volcano that's going to doom humanity, quote unquote. One of the things that bothers me about that is that there have been super eruptions when humans have been on the planet. There have been two, and in fact, both of those were larger than the last Yellowstone eruption. There was one about 74,000 years ago from Indonesia, and there was one 27,000 years ago from New Zealand. Both of those were larger than the last eruption at Yellowstone, and humanity survived. Now, what about the so-called earthquake swarm at Yellowstone? And wasn't there a particularly strong swarm earlier this year? and a 4.5 magnitude on the Richter scale. Yes, 4.5 is definitely noticeable. You'd feel it, and people did, but there was a 4.8 in 2004, and there was a 7.5 in 1959. Certainly, the summer swarms was really impressive, 
There were thousands of earthquakes, but that's sort of what Yellowstone does. It has swarms all the time, and one of them has to be the largest. I don't see that there's something to fear. Instead, I see it is an enormous opportunity for study. The idea that Yellowstone is going to erupt and kill us all is so demonstrably false. There's an odd disconnect, I think, between common sense and reality and what we know to be true and false based on past events and this irrational fear about Yellowstone in particular. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.